great to be here today and to see so many people at the cutting edge of financial technology here in this ancient building. And I'm uh, here to talk to you about what the government's doing to ensure that the UK continues to be the best place in the world to be a successful fintech business. You've got a great list of speakers lined up and a broad range of subject matter. And what I wanted to talk about today is what we're doing as government to make sure that the UK remains the global capital of fintech. The recent EY report on fintech, which we commissioned at Her Majesty's Treasury, ranks us above other fintech hotspots such as California, New York, and Singapore. The UK fintech sector generated £6.6 .6 billion worth of revenue in 2015. And with a workforce of over 60,000 people, more people work in UK fintech than in Singapore, Hong Kong, and Australia combined. So this is a very strong start, but our ambitions are even greater. We need to ensure that the UK continues to be the best place in the world to be a fintech company. And that's why I'm delighted today to be announcing a set of measures to deliver key fintech initiatives. First, to ensure that we effectively deliver on our fintech commitments, we'll create an industry-led fintech panel working with Tech City UK, as well as Innovate Finance, and other key representatives of the fintech community. The industry-led panel will oversee the overarching strategy for UK fintech and ensure the delivery of key initiatives. It will also have its very own delivery support function, which will monitor and drive initiatives to fruition. It will accelerate the time to market of government and industry initiatives, ensuring that they're targeted where they'll add the most value. One initiative that we particularly wish to see delivered is the implementation of the open banking standard. This will be great news for fintechs and other innovators. It will allow them to use bank data to provide a range of value-added services to consumers and will really shake up the way customers can access and use financial markets. The Open Banking Working Group published its report earlier this year on the open banking standard and we're now working closely with industry to agree the next steps. Through the financial advice market review too, there was overwhelming support for a pensions dashboard that would allow people to access their pension data easily, viewing all of their pension savings in one place. We believe this could help them gain a much better understanding of what actions they can take to ensure a comfortable income in retirement. And that's why I'm delighted to act as ministerial champion to support industry in designing and delivering the pensions dashboard. And I hope that we can collaborate to bring this technology to consumers. We recognize that government will need to play a critical role in ensuring that we have the right framework within which customers' data can be safe, safely shared. And I very much hope that you, along with other parts of the financial sector, will join us in making it happen. As well as delivering key initiatives, we also want to take additional action to ensure that fintechs thrive in the UK. I know how much talent matters. This government has already committed to ensuring that we have the exceptional talent needed in the digital technology field through the UK visa system. After feedback from the digital community, the Tech Nation visa scheme was enhanced in October 2015 to include new qualifying criteria for digital experts. This will allow for a wider range of fintech specialists to get a visa to work in the UK. Regulation matters too. Government has a key role in ensuring the right regulatory environment in which fintechs can thrive. As the EY report acknowledges, we already have a world-leading regulatory system in the FCA, known for its simplicity, transparency, and industry-led approach. UK fintechs have praised the role of the FCA in helping them to navigate regulatory complexity 
through Project Innovate. And you know it must be working when regulators from all around the world are now copying the innovative model of the Innovation Hub. The FCA is also looking into how to support the development and adoption of new technologies that facilitate the delivery of regulatory requirements, so-called RegTech. And we've announced the creation of a regulatory sandbox to allow innovative businesses a safe space to, taste, to test products and services on real consumers. And I'm sure you are aware that the FCA announced that the sandbox will start accepting testing applications on May the 9th. And Chris will be following me on stage shortly to take you through how the sandbox will work in greater detail. But we aren't just focused on the regulatory sphere. We recognize that fintech startups can find other aspects of the existing landscape challenging, such as trying to find basic professional services be those legal, accounting, human resources, or regulatory compliance. To this end, we will make it easier for UK fintechs to access the professional services they need. Drawing on Tech City UK's deep understanding of the tech community, industry will build an information hub that makes it easier for fintechs to navigate through the range of service providers and find the help that will benefit their business. We also recognize that professional services can be costly, particularly when fintechs are first starting out. We'll therefore work with industry to launch an initiative which will look to bring the major professional services providers together to provide fintechs with practical and cost-effective basic services. This could be similar to the existing program such as the EY's FinTech Talent Programme, in which high-performing staff are seconded directly into FinTechs on a pro bono basis. We will look to ensure as many professional services firms as possible make their services available. EY have already indicated their interest in the programme, and I hope many more professional service providers will join up. Last but by no means least, we want fintech to reach every part of the United Kingdom and have success overseas. The UK leads across a broad range of fintech specialisms, from digital currencies to alternative lending, e-commerce, and many others. There are few areas of fintech that the UK does not have an interest in. But in a globalized world, there can also be benefits to specialization. With specialization comes a concentration of knowledge, efficiencies, and a potential market edge. That's why I'm keen to see the continued growth of regional fintech hubs around the UK, and would like your thoughts on what else government can do to encourage this. This could be about how best to encourage links between academia and industry, or to establish research hubs, or simply enlisting special envoys to further champion the development of fintech in the region. So I'm today asking you, the industry, to share your experience and your ideas for how we can best ensure continued and sustainable growth of fintechs across the whole of the UK. Now, one of the fascinating aspects of being a Treasury Minister is the sheer amount of jargon that comes across your desk. I've got to mention a few of them already in this speech, but I've got used to the notion of research catapults, regulatory sandboxes, and so now it gives me great pleasure to announce that the next way the UK will continue to maintain our leading global position is through the development of fintech bridges. HM Treasury will work with UK Trade and Investment to establish fintech bridges with priority markets around the world. These bridges will help UK fintech firms expand internationally, as well as attracting international fintech companies and investors to the UK. This builds on the great work of the Financial Conduct Authority's Project Innovate, which promotes competition in the interest of consumers by helping put UK-based innovative businesses in touch with the right regulators, and also helps non-UK innovators in entering the UK market. I'm delighted 
that we're making real progress against delivering against many of the recommendations uh, that were included in EY's report delivered during FinTech Week. Today, I've announced a set of new measures, an industry-led FinTech panel, greater support to help UK FinTechs as they develop nationwide, and FinTech bridges with priority export markets. I hope that you, the industry, will help us drive these initiatives forward. But please be assured that this is just the start of our beautiful friendship and that we'll be announcing other ways we can help you help UK consumers. In the meantime, I look forward to continuing working with you to make sure the UK's environment for fintech is the best that it possibly can be. Thank you all very much and have a great summit. Thank you. <laughs>